FYI, I'm here at the Cambridge Literary Festival and I'm going to be meeting one of the world's most famous children's authors, Dame Jacqueline Wilson. And the scouting adventure abandoned because of extreme weather. It's punishingly hot here in Korea. It's an unprecedented heat wave. This is FYI, where we have all the latest info on all the top stories. And we've got to start off with what's been happening over in South Korea, where scouts from all over the world have been gathering there for a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yep, the World Scout Jamboree is a massive international event, but the scouts have had a bit more of an adventure than they expected because of extreme weather. First of all, there was a heat wave, with temperatures of more than 35 degrees. It caused hundreds of cases of heat exhaustion, and then South Korea was hit by a typhoon, causing the event to be brought to an early end. There's also been criticism about the conditions at the scout camp. Officials said there wasn't enough food, water or washing facilities for the amount of people there. Speaking at the press conference, the South Korean Prime Minister said that the conditions at the camps have gotten better after the heat waves, but said there's still work to do. As I inspected the event site, I found that the issues have improved considerably compared to when they were first raised. The participants I've met have told me that they have seen the improvements. But we don't think it's enough yet. We'll try harder until all the participants are completely satisfied. The UK Scouts have now moved their group of more than 4,000 teenagers to hotels in the capital city, Seoul. But at the cost of more than a million pounds, that's a massive expense for the Scouts, and it means they might not be able to afford some of the other activities they had planned for the next few years. We were particularly concerned about sanitation and the cleanliness of, of toilets that were causing severe concerns from us from a health and safety point of view. In addition to that, we were worried about food and those with dietary requirements in particular and the amount of food that was available. We were concerned also about the heat. It's punishingly hot here in Korea. It's an unprecedented heat wave. But it's not all bad news. The UK Scouts have been carrying on with their own adventure, with help from the Mayor of Seoul and the British Embassy. They've created a new programme of activities, which includes trekking, city tours, and connecting with Scouts from other countries. They were even given 4,000 free tickets to watch a local football club. Nice one. Check this out and see if you think it's fake news or fact. With all the hype around the Barbie movie, a lot of things have been turning pink recently. But what about this? It's apparently a rare pink grasshopper that was spotted in someone's garden. But can it be real? Fake or fact, find out later. So Scarlett, what's your favourite book of all time? That's a very tricky question. There's so many books, but I've always grown up reading Roald Dahl books, so it's got to be James and the Giant Peach. That's a good one. Well, my favourite book, and I'm sure a lot of people's favourite book, is The Story of Tracy Beaker by Jacqueline Wilson. Now, they say you should never meet your heroes. Oh, I just couldn't resist. Dame Jacqueline Wilson is a multi-award winning children's author and the former children's laureate. She's published over 100 books and given us some amazing characters like Tracy Beaker and Hetty Feather. And now she's got a new book, The Other Evie Trimmer, all about a girl who time travels back to Victorian London. So have you always loved books? I was one of these children that the moment I woke up, I didn't get up and get ready for school. I just wanted to read. I read everywhere. And um, if I didn't read my own books, I used to go to the library a great deal. When did you know you wanted to become a writer? Um, I had to go into hospital to have my tonsils out when I was six. When I met the doctor who was going to do it, he just said, what do you want to do when you grow up? And my mother was shocked to, to hear me say, I want to be a writer. As soon as I saw that there was a name on the spine of the book that wasn't the name of the story, I thought, that's the person that wrote the book. I want to be one of them. So a lot of your characters have difficult home lives or struggle to fit in. Why is it important for books to tackle difficult subjects? Well, ages ago, when I was growing up, Books for children were very kind of gentle and 
everybody had a mum and a dad and a lovely house. And I used to think, well, my life's not like that. And most of the children I know at school, their lives are a bit different. So I always wanted to write about children who might be going through quite a tough time, or they might be very happy in their family, but big money problems, all sorts of different things. Yeah, I think that's amazing, because I know some people in my school that read a lot of your books and they can really relate and they feel like you understand what they're going through. Well, that's what I really want to do. I want to sort of, like, it's as if I'm reaching out and say, it's, it's yeah. OK, you're not alone. Loads of people have to go through this sort of stuff. But also for a child that comes from a really loving background and everything fine, I want them to know why somebody at school might be a bit sad or a bit angry or whatever. Everyone in my family is a big fan of Tracy Beaker. <laughs> I, I have no idea when I wrote the first one that all these many years later, people will actually know her name. I think if Tracy were real, she'd be so proud. Yeah. <laughs> Now, we've all probably got a favourite type of music, right? I'm into hip-hop and pop music. Scarlett, what are you into? Well, I love pop music too, but I also really like musicals. Well, if you're anything like me, you may not be too familiar with classical music, but I'm joined by someone who's on a mission to change that. Yep, 14-year-old Malachi rose to fame after getting to the finals of Britain's Got Talent, and he just released his debut album, Golden, and Malachi joins us now. Hi, thank you so much for Hi. coming in. So, you've got an incredible voice. How old were you when you first started singing? Um, well, because I'd been singing around the house when I was, like, around seven, so then my mum kind of, like, made me join the cathedral choir that was there, because she was like, oh, because you have such a nice voice, you should audition. So then I auditioned and then I got in. So as well as performing in front of the Britain's Got Talent judges, you recently performed in front of 5,000 people at the Royal Albert yeah. Hall. I mean, do you ever get nervous? Well, I don't really get nervous that much. I'm just like, I just really want to like perform on stage. So you just released your new album called Golden. I mean, that's just amazing. You're 14 and you've released an album. <laughs> so what would your advice be to anyone our age who might want to get into music? Um, well, if you want to get into music, I would say probably just like, See if your school or like anything, if there's a choir that you can join or like different ways that you can like participate in music based like groups. Yeah. So when you're singing, how does it make you feel? I mean, do you feel any type of emotion? I mean, I feel like I just really connect to the music. So it just makes me really happy and just makes me want to sing more. So I guess we're going to listen to a bit more of your music at the end of the show. But for now, thanks for joining us, Malakai. Thank, Thank you. you. The England netball team made history by winning silver at the Netball World Cup final in South Africa. Why is this such a big deal? Well, Laura Malcolm from the England team joins us now to find out more. Hi, Laura. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations for your medal. That is just amazing. Yeah. So what does this mean for netball as a sport? I guess it's just another opportunity for everybody to see what an amazing sport it is. And every time we do something like this, it inspires a lot of people to get out and give it a go. You might be really good at it, or you might just find out you absolutely love it. It's such a great game to make new friends and just to stay fit and healthy. So. You know, there's, there's more than just the medal side of it. You actually get a lot from this. Yeah, you have, like, a whole community, you know, friends around you, you know, team players. It's, it's an amazing yeah. sport. It is. We actually call it the netball community a lot, or <laughs> netball families, what it's called quite a lot for us. And that's just because we actually do build quite strong relationships. I've got a lot of friendships, not just from playing, but from coaching as well. So you do build a lot of lifelong friendships from this sport. So, yeah, I love my netball family. <laughs> so do you think netball gets enough attention in the UK? I'm going to say no, because I would love it to have even more attention than it already has. Just getting more people involved in the sport, more people loving the sport, watching the sport, playing the sport. I think that will be a massive step forward. So what would your advice be to any young netballers who might want to play international netball one day? My advice would be to just give it a go. 
give it everything and to just enjoy it. And my favourite thing about playing netball is how inspiring I find the people around me. So you spend a lot of time with your teammates and you actually get to see all the amazing things they do away from the netball court as well. And, and that's what makes it such a special game. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Laura. Oh, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, if netball's not your thing, how about golf? One of the biggest golfing events of the year, the Women's Open, has been taking place in Walton Heath, near London. One person who's on track to compete there in the future is 11-year-old Mabel. She wanted to tell us why she thinks that women golfers should be just as famous as the men. This is her story. Equality. This word is so important to me. Girls and boys should have the exact same opportunity in life, just like, for example, in the game of golf. <laughs> Even though things have got better for girl golfers, there are still some challenges. Golf's gender pay gap is still one of the biggest in sport. This was made better when last year's Women's Open Golf Tournament got more funding which meant the winner got over a million dollars. This shows why major brand sponsorships are so important. Even then, it's not the same prize money as the boys. I love golf so much, I even play it in the rain. I've been playing golf since I was six years old when my dad took me to the driving range. I think to make golf a more equal sport, we should make ladies more famous and start getting more girls on the golf course. Something I enjoy most about golf is playing in the summer in that hot nice breeze and hitting really nice shots. It makes me feel really happy being out on the golf course and swinging that club. When I was younger I used to play tennis but ever since I've been on the golf course I've never looked back. I'm proud to be a part of the new generation of female golfers where things are finally starting to get better. If you have a story and want to report for FYI, get in touch via our webpage. Or even better, get your teacher to set up an FYI news club at your school. Members get a chance to report for us, and we'll even help you film your own story. You can watch and discuss all the latest episodes, and get on the programme with your views and reports. To find out more, head to first.news forward slash FYI. So did you think this fabulous pink grasshopper was fake news or fact? Well, it's fact. Its pink colour is caused by a very rare genetic mutation. Experts say people have a 1% chance of seeing them in their lifetime. Cool. Well, that's just about it for this week. But as promised, we're going to leave you with some music from our guest Malachi singing Pia Yesu. See you next time. Bye. Bye.